Hi everyone, today I'm going to go into the details of my entire solar system uh, that I put in here. But before I do that, let's talk about why I put in this system to begin with. So I live in Texas, and over the last three years we have had more and more power outages lasting longer and longer. In my opinion, with the more electric cars are going to be plugged into the grid, without the increasing amount of transmission lines that we need or additional capacity via new power plants, I think our grid is just going to become more and more unstable and higher electricity prices. So I am preparing accordingly. And if I'm wrong on that, well, my worst case scenario is I am just making my own electricity and becoming more self-reliant. So I'm good with that. So during one of the more recent power outages, I don't know, a little over a year ago, um, I ended up running a 9,000 watt, 240 volt generator, propane gas generator that I have. And it went through a, a normal size, like barbecue, you know, the propane barbecue tanks. It went through one of those tanks in about two hours. And that tank was full. I mean, to be fair, I was running it at not at capacity probably, but I mean, probably 75, 80%. But still, I went through, what, $23 of propane in two hours. So I learned real quick that propane, those, those type of generators, they're not good for a long-term outage. And also during COVID, I called my local propane company because I have a thousand gallon propane tank here on my property. And it was going to take them three months is what they were estimating to bring propane out to me. So it just seems like in this new world we're living in that you know, services are just becoming more and more unreliable. You can't get things quickly. And before I go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel, guys, if you would, because that really helps me out. So I wanted a solar system that could run my entire home, not just how you see the typical one where solar is just a backup for somebody. I didn't want to back up with just critical loads. I wanted to be able to power my whole home on solar. And, you know, most people get this, they use like a type of solar generator where their solar system is for backup if they have one that's more of an off-grid style system. They use it as if the power grid went out, they will use that to power the refrigerators and lights and a couple critical things. I wanted to turn that whole equation upside down. I wanted my solar system to power my home nearly the entire time. And then I'm using the energy grid or my electric provider as my backup in case I don't have enough sun and battery storage in the event of you know cloudy or rainy days for multiple days. And here's how my system works just in a nutshell. So the power comes from my electric meter, which is about 300 feet away. It goes from my electric meter into this Solark 15K inverter. This is a hybrid inverter, which means it can be off-grid or on-grid. So the big difference in this compared to most other inverters out there is the power comes from the power company into this first. It doesn't go from the power company into my home panel here that's about 10 feet away that powers my whole house. It doesn't do that. It goes here first. And then from here, it goes into my electric panel. So basically, my solar system, it can power my entire home, anything I want. Now, yeah, I got to be careful managing my loads. I can't run everything because if you go over basically 12,000 watts on this thing which that's still a lot of power uh, if you go over that it could shut this thing down it'll go into an overload and then it'll have to restart and reboot so but i never get close to that i run about a max of about 8,000 um on my house when i'm running all my and i'm all electric now well i guess i do have my oven is the only thing still on propane other than that my water heater my washer dryer my cooktops those are all electric and i am fine now, what is awesome about this inverter too is I can program it and it's very easy to program. So here's how the system actually works. So the power comes from my solar panels into here, into my Solark 15K inverter, and it takes that power and sends that right to my home to power all of my loads, my entire electrical panel. Now, if there's not enough solar coming in, then it defaults to my battery bank right here and pulls the rest of whatever it needs from the battery bank. And then if there's not enough solar and my batteries get down to 20% a state of charge, then it automatically goes to grid for only what it needs. So it'll still use whatever solar power there is. It'll just take from the grid what it needs in order to make up that difference for the time being. And once the sun comes out, um, it goes right back to solar only, making the system very efficient. And this inverter is the brains of the operation that can make all of that happen. Now I have an enormous system in regards to your typical residential home solar system. And that's because I use a lot more power than most people. Um, I use between around 60 to 80 kilowatt hours a day. And mainly that's because I have 15 acres here and I've got five homes total on this property. 
and I, and my system here, the solar arc and my batteries and everything, it, it powers my well, which takes water out of the ground and stores it into these giant 3,000 gallon water tanks. And that water is distributed to all five homes. So that 240 volt well pump that's 440 feet deep, it is always running on my system. And that's, that's a lot of power. Um, and I also have to run a above ground pressure pump that actually pressurizes all that water to go out to the five houses. So I'm running two different 240 volt pumps a lot of the time on this property. So that's why I use so much power. So most of you aren't gonna use that much power, but that'll give you an explanation as to why my system is so big compared to most people's. And another reason my system is so big is because I converted all of my propane appliances, except for the oven that I use, um, over to electric. So my water heater, I converted to electric. Uh, my stovetop, I use induction cooktops. Um, my washer and dryer is now electric, it's not propane. And I don't use my propane heater anymore because I have mini splits that can do AC or heat. So I'm pretty much all electric. And why I did that was because I don't want to be dependent on propane either. Because it took over three months during COVID, I, I don't trust that either anymore. So that's why I went all electric. Now, if you keep your propane appliances and natural gas appliances, you'll use a lot less power than I do. So keep that in mind. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I also have a, a shop, a workshop that I have, and I also have a little eight foot by eight foot office in there with an air conditioning that I work out of all the time. And I have seven refrigerators. So you can see I use a lot of power. So don't take my system as you got to have this many solar panels or this many batteries, um, but you do really want this inverter. I would highly recommend it, even if your system is smaller, because this is the one that can power your whole home, send power to your whole panel. And it has a 200 amp pass through. So if you want to just shut off your solar panels, your batteries, it'll just pass through 200 amps of power right over to your main panel. And it accepts up to like four aught wire. So it'll handle your regular wire that you have coming from your electrical panel. And I have a PDF diagram of my entire system, how it's wired, every single component with links to where I bought them at. Um, it's a free download. Uh, you can get that download at solarpdfdownload.com. Don't do www before it, just put solarpdfdownload.com. I'll also link to that in the description of this video as well if you want to download it and see every piece of information I have on this thing. All right, now let's go outside and I'll go walk you through how the entire system works. So here's the first and most visual part of my entire system or anybody's system is the solar panels. Now these are grouped into three groups of 20. So I've got three different solar panel strings here heading back to my solar inverter. Um, and it's actually pretty simple. They're wired in series um, 10 panels are wired in series and then each of those 10 are ran in parallel and they each come back to one of these switches right here these imo dc isolator switches so i can just turn this basically knob and it shuts down all power from these 20 solar panels um, and that is critical for any system to be able to shut down power so you can completely know you're safe to work on your inverter and this is the disconnect for the next 20 panels and the wires all go in the ground here and they come back into one conduit so two strings are wired from this conduit going down so there's one string over there it comes into this box and loops down connects with these two it doesn't connect with these two but actually flows with them in the conduit underground and then here is the last 20 panels and that those are on this disconnect switch and then the, all the wires come into this box here and just kind of loop in and go down so i've got three let's see i've got to, technically a ground coming in through here and i have six wires so there's three positives and three negatives one positive for each of the 20 strings and one negative for each of the 20 strings and it goes underground and goes underground all the way underneath my house actually goes up into the yeah, i'll go up into this box just made it easy for me to pull wire and then it goes out the back of this box underneath my house back to where my solar inverter is now let's go over there and i'll show you that okay so from my solar panels this is that conduit that came out ran underneath my house and goes right into this box here and then it runs straight up into my solar inverter from this point. So to give you an idea of what's going on over here, basically my power from my meter comes in about 300 feet that direction. 
it runs to the corner over here. It's about 20 feet away from me. And then it runs through this flexible conduit pipe right here and goes up into uh, the room I have where my solar inverter is, which I'll show you in a minute. And from there, it goes into a disconnect, which I'll show all of that. Um, and then it comes, the power comes back out of my solar arc from one of these conduits and then runs, and you can kind of see a dangling line there. And then it runs up and underneath my house and into, into my 200 amp main circuit breaker panel for my whole house. So I can run all of my loads off this thing. Um, and, you know, forgive me with the construction. I still need to insulate this. I need to run a drain line because I'm putting in a sink in here. So I'm doing some more construction under here, but uh, that's how it works so far. Um, one of these conduits is for the main power that comes out of the Solark inverter over to my house, which I just mentioned. And then there's another one for the solar panel wiring coming from the solar panels and this conduit here. And then there's another one that's empty because I have that just in case I want to set a generator right here. And I can run power from the generator up and then I can use that as backup instead of using the grid as backup, which I do right now. So now let's go inside and see the uh, inverter and how that's all wired. All right, so you saw those three conduits that were outside going up through the floor. These are those right there. And there's also this one right here. This one is the power from the grid. So the power that comes from the grid, that big wire, that, that big conduit you saw hanging down outside, that goes up and into this, which is a 200 amp fusible disconnect. So I can shut the grid power off. I want it to by just pulling this lever down and I do that all the time. In fact, shoot, I can just do it right now just to show you. So there we go. I pulled, I shut the grid down. So now there is no grid power at all to my system. And as you can see, the grid lit up right there, yellow. That says, hey, you've got no grid power. Here's backup. Just wanted to let you know that. So now I'm running on solar panels only, which it's really cloudy right now. It's getting later in the day. So I'm only producing one kilowatt and my batteries are making up the difference. So there's three, my house is using three kilowatts and my batteries are 100% charged and I'm using a little bit of battery power now as well. So now getting back to where this goes. So it goes from the grid into here. There's fuses and I have a couple spare fuses just in case there was a power surge. I can replace these things easily. And then it goes through here, down this conduit here into this box. And then it gets distributed now. So let me open up my inverter. Now this is live electric at 220 volts, so I can't touch anything or I'm gonna be in big trouble. Okay, so how this works is, power comes from the grid right here. It goes up, that is my grid connection, that's backup. All these wires up here were already there. I didn't install those. I just installed and plugged these in. So these two wires are my hot wires. From the grid is my backup. And then these two right here go down and they go down through here over to my electrical panel that's about 15 feet away, maybe 10 feet away over here. That feeds my whole house. So this inverter feeds my whole house. Those drop right into the top of my main 200 amp panel and connect everything. There's two right here. Those two are for a generator. You can see where it says gen right there. If I wanted to hook up a generator, which is why I have an extra conduit here in case I wanted to do that. Actually, it's this one. Um, and those solar panel wires that you saw, they come up this conduit right here from my solar panels and they go right through here and they get separated into three different charge controllers that are on this. So you can see positives, negatives, positive, ne and you see two positives and two negatives on all those. That's because I have an EMP shield on each of those charge controllers protecting it from any surges or EMP blasts. And I'll link in the description of this if you want to check what those out, what those look like are. So that's how it works for the solar panels and the grid connections and feeding to my home panel. And then we have the other main component of this whole system, which is my EG4 battery bank. Here is my battery bank. I've got 30 kilowatts of battery storage here. And these, there's six total batteries. Each of them are about five, a little over five kilowatt hours. Of energy storage so you got one two three four five six times five there's your 30 kilowatt hours i have i really want another i want to double this basically or i want to double my battery bank size in order to really remain off grid like 95 percent of the time right now i'm off grid about 85 percent of the time because i'm in texas and i use a lot of power at night as i mentioned 
So nah, I probably really need just two extra batteries and I'd be off grid 95% of the time. And the reason I say 95% of the time is because, well, there's just going to be some storms that you're just not going to be able to uh, last through. If it's there's a storm for three, four, or five days, you're just, I mean, there's no way. You'll have to have some sort of backup. Let me go over the battery cables on this thing. So each of the positive, the red cable on each of these batteries, connect to this giant bus bar over here. It's kind of hidden by the big wire, but they all connect there and all the negatives connect to each, each battery over to this large bus bar here. And as you can see, I've got this big giant black negative cable that goes down. That's what goes back to the inverter. And here's the big, large red positive cable that goes back to the inverter. And I'll show you where that goes. And they come out the bottom, go up into this metal box, go right through here and then go and connect up there as positive and negative. And that is how this whole system works. Now let's go over the entire cost of my solar system. Now keep in mind that I bought all of these components in early 2022. So as I mentioned, my solar array is 19 kilowatts, basically 19,200 watts. And those solar panels cost me about $9,000. And that was for 60 panels. And they are 320 watts each panel. Now my Solarc 15K right here, the brains of the system, this thing cost me $8,000 at the time. Now, since then it's come down $1,000, so you can get it for about $7,000 as I'm making this video in October of 2023. My 30 kilowatt battery bank here, that cost me about 10,500 for 30 kilowatts. And the wooden solar racks that I made to hold all of my solar panels, that cost me about $3,500 and a ton of work on my end. I mean, months of work building those out. Now, would I have rather have gone with metal racks? Absolutely, I would have, but that was gonna add, gosh, over $20,000 to the cost of my system. That metal, those metal racks are expensive, and then the installation of them, I don't think I could have pulled that one off myself. I would have needed special machinery to drill, because I've got solid rock. I've got six inches of soil and then solid rock underneath that, so you couldn't just dig these things in easily. So it was gonna be a lot in labor, and the material costs were astronomical. I would have rather went with metal, but you know, I just, I didn't have it in my budget. And you know what, if I have to replace these wooden racks after 15 years, you know, so be it. So the entire cost of my whole system cost me about $35,000. Now that was materials only. Now, if you add up all those costs I just mentioned, that comes out to about 31,000. So there's another $4,000 just in miscellaneous items like wire, conduit, disconnect switches, metal gutters that I have underneath here under my house for the wires to run into, strapping, I mean, just all your random stuff. And so you can expect that to be about 12 to 15% of the cost of your total system for just those miscellaneous items. Now I did install this whole system myself. So keep in mind, if you hire somebody else to do it, you're probably looking at about double what I paid. So it's pretty safe for labor these days, to just double whatever your materials costs are. Now I did install this myself, but I do understand electricity. You are working with 240 volts here. My father-in-law is a licensed electrician and I worked for him actually uh, in college when I was dating his daughter and I learned a ton to be able to do this myself. So if you don't know what you're doing, do not try and do this yourself. Electricity can kill you, especially at 240 volts of what you're working with with this system. Now I'm going to be working on a spreadsheet that will help go into how long it's going to take for this system to pay for itself. And in that spreadsheet, I wanted to add in a calculation for inflation. So I could punch in say 3% or 10% or 20% uh, in electricity and natural gas or propane cost inflation. So I could really get an idea of how many years is it gonna take to pay for this whole system? Because before you move forward on a system like this, I highly recommend you breaking down those numbers and you'd be shocked at how much inflation can change those numbers if you don't take that into account. So, so keep an eye out for that video that I'll be releasing soon. And that's it for now, everyone. Thanks.